What's up investors, it's Mike from MJF Invest. Uh, today's video I'm just going to bring uh, topics to you about some, some companies that I've been following and covering. Um, I think it's valuable information and I'm going to tell you how I'm using this information that I'm about to present. But before I get into that, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel for future content, and let's talk stocks in the comment section. Uh, the first company I want to talk about was Workhorse, ticker symbol WKHS. Uh, last week we got news that Workhorse has sold 500 of their C-1000 series to Pritchard. Financing will be provided by Hitachi Capital America, or HCA, as part of the company's previously announced strategic partnership with HCA. Vehicles will be distributed through Pritchard Company's dealership locations across the country. Throughout its 107 years of operating history, Pritchard Companies has developed a robust national network of partners and is one of the nation's largest commercial vehicle distributors, selling over 30,000 units annually, annually to customers across all 50 states. The deal was brokered by Hitachi. It's a very relevant uh, news because now Workhorse is starting to secure some of these uh, big deals and Pritchard is a big company. I saw Steve Schrader on Jack Spencer Investing. I saw him say that the deal with Hitachi is starting to pay dividends. Uh, he said that this is the first of several uh, deals that Hitachi can hopefully uh, bring to the table. Um, Workhorse is kind of moving now from a speculative play. You know, they're starting to gain some revenue. Uh, you know, their, their, their earnings last week, they're still a brand new company. They're not making any money. They're bleeding money. Uh, but this here um, is kind of, you know, proof of concept and, you know, that they, they have some momentum. We've seen that this stock can get hyped. We've seen how excited people get about this stock. And also, just last month, uh, Workhorse secured $200 million in financing from institutional lenders. And in that Paperwork, if you read, they underwrote those shares for $36.14 per share. The article, Workhorse secures $200 million financing from institutional lenders. Workhorse is an American technology company focused on providing sustainable and cost-effective drone integrated electric vehicles to the last mile delivery sector. Has entered into a note purchase agreement, NPA, which will sell $200 million aggregate principal amount of its 4% senior secured convertible notes due in 2024 to two institutional lenders. The proceeds of the offering before expenses are expected to be approximately $194.5 million and will be used to increase and accelerate production volume, advance new products to market, replace previous higher cost financing, and support current working capital and other general corporate purposes. And the part that really draws my attention, and I think this is important, and I think it should be noted, the NPA provides that the notes will initially be convertible into common stock by the holders at $36.14 per share, which is a premium of 35% over closing price, the common stock on Friday, October the 9th. So Workhorse is trading at $19 right now. They gave those shares away at $36. There's room right there. Um, that, that's, that's the type of investor I am. I'm looking for stuff that is undervalued in a sense. Now, I know you might say, oh, you can't justify Workhorse's valuation at the moment with, with their current, uh, situation. Uh, but I beg to differ, you know, um, here's the article right here, $36 and 14 cents a share. Um, so I think Workhorse is about to go on another run. Uh, so I think it's a buy at $19. Now, whether you want to use it as a swing trade or whether you want to hold it long term, that is up to you. Uh, I may, I have some call options for 2021 for Workhorse and I own some shares, but I have a low average cost. I was lucky enough to stumble across Workhorse when it was very cheap. Um, and, and I started buying shares based on the idea, you know, a little bit. And then it started getting hyped up and it, and it grew. Um, now it's settling back down again. I'm expecting another run. Can you get contract news from the post office? Hopefully. Um, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. The other company I wanted to talk about was Aqua Bounty Technologies, ticker symbol AQB. Uh, I have two videos about Aqua Bounty on my channel. 
Uh, go back and check those out. I'll drop a link in the description. Right. So in those videos, I had discussed that Aqua Bounty is one of my favorite long-term investments. I mean, long-term, like a decade. There's rumors floating around that there's going to be more share dilution, but that is to be expected with a penny stock and a penny stock early on. They need to secure financing to continue to grow these farms. We just know that farm number three is going to be in Mayfield, Kentucky. Um, you know, they got approved for trials in China, Argentina, Brazil, Israel. It's supposed to be on the shelves in the United States. Also, uh, in those videos, I had said that there is risk associated with an investment like this, with being so early on and it being a growth stock. And when news comes, you know, you got to pay attention to it. And just about two weeks ago, uh, um, a judge from California had said the FDA may not have considered environmental impacts if these genetically engineered salmon escape from the facility. A judge orders FDA to analyze risks of escape by genetically engineered salmon. Weeks ago, San Francisco judge Vincent Cambria signaled his doubts about Aqua Bounty's plans to breed its Aqua Advantage genetic salmon and an environment assessment by the Food and Drug Association used to permit the new breed of genetically modified salmon did not impress him. On Thursday, the U.S. District Court of Northern District of California judge ruled the FDA violated core, envi core environmental laws in improving aqua advantage salmon. The judge agreed with environmental groups who feared the genetic salmon might damage wild salmon populations. Now, I've seen pictures. I've seen video of the facility. I don't see how that's possible. Aqua Bounty pretty much says it's not possible. And they say they remain confident that the FDA made the right choice and will continue to, to approve uh, their product. But you have to know about it. So, you know, I bring the good stuff to you, but I also bring the bad stuff to you so you can make a, a, an informed decision. And that's really all we got to do. We got to, you got to make decisions that bring the odds in your favor. That, that's really, really it. Now, Aqua Bounty is a small part of my portfolio. Um, it's roughly 5% of my portfolio, 4% of my portfolio. Uh, I own some shares. I own some call options, but I keep it level, uh, for every spec play that I have. I also have a value or a safer investment, not a financial advisor, but I wouldn't suggest, um, I wouldn't suggest that your whole portfolio is just filled with spec plays. Um, those are usually the first ones that get hit hard in a market crash or a recession or, you know, a correction. So it's just something to keep an eye on. I'm still uh, Aqua Bounty bull. If you're going to get into it, if you're going to stay into it for at least five years, um, I wouldn't be so concerned with the day-to-day -day price action of Aqua Bounty. Uh, you know, so just something to keep an eye on. Uh, but they do remain confident. Also, I wanted to talk about an article that I came across about ARK Invest. Now, if you've been following on my channel, you know how much I love ARK Invest. They are my absolute favorite. Kathy Wood is my favorite investor. Uh, and now I just, I, you know, I feel, I feel like this article has kind of shook me up a little bit. Um, the article says that there's a, a company named Resolute. Resolute is the distributor of their ETFs. In 2016, when ARK came to the agreement for Resolute to distribute their ETFs, uh, there was an option in there for Resolute to exercise control or seize control and decision making of ARK Invest. Kathy Wood is not happy about this. Uh, she's been open and vocal uh, how she's not happy about this. She does not want Resolute to seize control of her company. And I don't blame her. Uh, it's another, like, as I was reading the article, I just started thinking, like, oh my God, these. Like, this is why bankers have such a bad name and a bad rap, you know? And and what the... Well, this company is seizing control of her company because she was looking to replace them as the ETF distributor. Uh, now, I don't know how, you know, if this was like, you know, in the... I don't know how this happened or if she... I don't know how she approved of this in 2016 for this company to seize control in 2021 or to have the option... I don't know how she allowed this or if it was snuck in there or if it was some kind of shady deal, uh, but she is upset about it. So, I, you know, I don't know if anybody can clarify or maybe give me some more information to clear this up, drop a comment and let me know. Uh, but as of now, the way that I am reading this article is that ARC's open source transparency 
could could be could be done. It could be over. Um, I know that Resolute uh, wants people to to invest directly into their ETF, into Arc ETF, or into the ETF that they own, and they don't want you necessarily to have access day to day to the information where you could just you know you could read what Arc's buying. And then say, okay, I want to buy Slack. I want to buy Workhorse. I want to buy Virgin Galactic. I want to buy uh, whatever, Pure Storage. Because ARK's been buying it. You won't know. You won't have access to that daily. If you want access to ARK's companies, you will have to purchase their ETF. Uh, and that's kind of the way that I'm reading this article. Boy, I hope I'm wrong because I subscribe to all of ARK's stuff. Their weekly newsletter, their daily trading, uh, their monthly newsletters. Uh, their their research for robotics, their research for genomic revolution, for next generation internet, uh, for it all. Anything that ARC provides in open source, I, I, I subscribe to, I read and go over thoroughly. Uh, I find it invaluable. Um, it's made me a better researcher. It's made me a better investor. I've recommended and suggested to all, all my subscribers, rather, um, all my subscribers do the same. Uh, just I'm not saying follow blindly what ARC does, but you should be aware of what they do and pay attention to what they're doing. Try to understand why. Where's the market headed? Um, you know, this woman's a genius. She's the best in the business. I think when we look back 15, 20 years down the road, she'll be looked at as the, the greatest of all time. You know, she will... She won't be looked at as like the next Warren Buffett. She will be better than Warren Buffett. She's the to the greatest. No, I don't. I don't like the idea of, of somebody to come and kind of like seizing her company away. It kind of bothers me. Today, you know, suggest it, recommend it. Um, you know, reading material is important. Uh, this book here really showed me how Warren Buffett reads a financial statement, what he finds important, and I just wanted to show you guys. So, if you don't know how to read a financial statement, this is great. Um, and if you want to learn how to read a financial statement the way Warren Buffett does for right here, I uh, was like 15 bucks, uh, you know, and, and again, anything that makes me a better investor, I want to do a better trader. I want to do, and then I want to, uh, bring it to, bring it to my subscribers again. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you found value in the video.